vitamin D has uh, has gone from being a very a fairly obscure vitamin to now one of the most popular vitamins. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, it's it's huge. I mean, everyone talks about vitamin D, and vitamin D is interesting because it's the only really free vitamin. In other words, you can get vitamin D by exposing most of your body to the sun for 15 to 20 minutes each day. But the sun, there's a couple of caveats to that. The sun has to be in the right place in the sky because you have to have a certain spectrum of ultraviolet light, which when it hits your skin, it converts the cholesterol in your skin into vitamin D. That method can produce as much as 20,000 units vitamin D. Most of it is destroyed uh, pretty soon, but you still get enough vitamin D where you actually would not even need to take a vitamin supplement, a vitamin D supplement. However, uh, most people don't really go out in the sun, and the problem is that, again, the sun has to be in the, in the right spot in the spot, uh, sky to submit the correct wavelength, uh, ultraviolet wavelength, to produce vitamin D. And in northern latitudes during the winter, the sun could be out bright and high, but it's not going to give you the right wavelength. You could walk around naked, you're still not going to get enough vitamin D. Uh, also, if you have darker skin, it's also difficult uh, to get vitamin D from the sun. Uh, uh, if you, uh, if you, if you're uh, older, it, uh, your body becomes less efficient at converting the cholesterol in your skin into vitamin D. And finally, if you're obese, if you have a lot of body fat, the vitamin D instead of you know going to the body, uh, uh, you know, it, or being circulated, it gets sequestered in the fat cells, so you're not really getting as much vitamin D. Uh, uh, the, the big significance uh, about vitamin D is. In years past, they thought that the, the, the only thing that vitamin D, they thought it did two things. It, it's, it helped the, increase the absorption of the mineral calcium in the body, and it prevented a disease called rickets, which is basically brittle bone disease, very common in children years ago. They'd get like a bow-legged look. Uh, uh, Franco Colombo, the famous Mr. Olympia, if you ever look closely at him, he was slightly bow-legged. That's because when he grew up in Sardinia, uh, island off Italy, he, as a child, he was vitamin D deficient, and it gave him rickets, so he had a little bit of abnormal bone formation. Uh, uh, but vitamin D really came to the fore when a couple of years ago it was discovered that vitamin D receptors exist all over the body. They're everywhere. They're in the muscles, the brain, you name it, the heart. And, you know, if, the, if there's vitamin D receptors there, uh, vitamin D must must be doing something. And vitamin D is interesting also because vitamin D is a nutrient, but it's also a pre-hormone. What we call vitamin D is actually a pro-hormone. And in the body, it's changed by enzymes or converted by enzymes in the liver and kidney into the active hormonal form, which is 25-hydroxycholecalciferol. And when I talk about vitamin D receptors, I'm talking about the hormonal form of vitamin D attaching to those receptors. And what it does, it's involved in the, in the growth and development of muscle cells, uh, the function of the innate and adoptive immune system, the maintenance of your skeletal system, and much, much more. Uh, and the problem is, again, because vitamin D is not commonly found in many foods. I mean, I've seen uh, blogs online where they talk about it's easy to get vitamin D in food. I disagree. You can get vitamin D in food, but the quantities you'd have to eat to, to reach an ideal blood level of hormonal D is huge. Like some people talk about eggs. If you, if you consume about two, three dozen eggs a day, you're probably getting enough vitamin D to get that ideal level, which is about 60 nanograms. I'm talking about the hormonal uh, uh, blood level of D. You, you'd have to eat that many. Uh, I mean, you can eat less eggs or fewer eggs and not have a vitamin D deficiency, but you won't be in the optimal vitamin D or hormonal D levels for health. And they say that up to 40% of U.S. adults are considered to have insufficient or not enough D as measured by the 25-hydroxycholecalciferol blood tests, and that figure is 30. If it's 30 or less, you're not, have, you're, you're not, you're not uh, ingesting sufficient uh, vitamin D. As a matter of fact, uh, 6% of people in the world are considered deficient in vitamin D. And, it, and, and a vitamin C deficiency affects an estimated 1 billion people. So, uh, but what happens, let's look at the other side of the coin. Uh, is, is it possible to ha ingest too much vitamin D where, to the point where you get a type of vitamin D toxicity? Well, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. And, and uh, the other fat-soluble vitamins are A, E, K, 
these uh, fats, fat soluble vitamins, unlike water soluble vitamins like vitamin C and B vitamins, the fat soluble vitamins can accumulate in the body. And because they can accumulate in the body, theoretically, they can cause toxicity symptoms. The truth of the matter is, vitamin D, as a uh, in relation to toxicity symptoms, uh, it's very uncommon to see to uh, vitamin D toxicity or hypervitaminosis D, as it's called medically. Uh, the only way that you would get a vitamin D toxicity is if you ingested huge amounts. And I see people online, some of them talk about ingesting 50, 50 to 75,000 units of vitamin D. If you ingested that much for an extended time, likely you would bring up your vitamin D uh, blood level to 100 nanograms or more, and that's hypervitaminosis D. Uh, 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 having vitamin D toxicity is more common in certain uh, medical conditions, such as granu granulomato granulomatosis disorders, congenital disorders, some types of lymphomas or cancers, uh, if you have a dysregulated vitamin D metabolism, uh, again, you know the most vitamin, uh, the most common cause of vitamin D toxicity is just injecting. Too, I'm sorry, ingesting too much vitamin D. So, what are some of the symptoms of uh, excess vitamin D? Well, the most common is elevated blood levels. Again, if it's a 100 nanograms or more per milliliter of blood, you have hypervitaminosis D which can cause calcium deposition in arteries and all that stuff. Uh, by the way, if you do take vitamin D uh, of a, a dose 5,000 units or more a day, it's a good idea to also take at least 100 units of vitamin K because, or it's K2, vitamin K2, because the K2 will divert calcium from the arterial uh, linings into where the calcium should be, like bone. It prevents the deposition of calcium into soft tissue. So it's a good idea if you take large amounts of vitamin D to also take vitamin K. Uh, uh, vitamin D intoxication, med intoxication is uh, considered uh, a, le a level of 150 nanograms or more. That's really bad. That means your, your vitamin K won't even help you if you take that much. What's the ideal level, blood level of vitamin D? Between 30 and 60 nanograms. 30 is the minimum. 60 is more ideal, and it has a huge effect uh, uh, protecting against uh, illness and disease. There's some evidence showing that if you maintain that level of vitamin D, it'll help prevent influenza. Uh, it makes vitamin D makes flu vaccines work better because it uh, not so much the vitamin D because vitamin D optimizes the immune system. Your your vaccines work with the immune system. The more efficient your immune system is, the more efficient the vaccines are. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so you want to look for, again, a uh, blood level between uh, 30 and 60. 30 is minimal. 60 is more, uh, it's more uh, optimal. Uh, there was a 2020 case report, 73-year-old man, he developed vitamin D toxicity, and he was only taking 10,000 units of vitamin D, but he took it for many years. Now, 10,000, a lot of, you'll read online, a lot of people talk about routinely taking 10,000 units of D a day. Now, that's not dangerous if, you, if it's short term, especially if you're already vitamin D deficient. As a matter of fact, you should take that much. If you take a blood test of vitamin D, you show up deficient, you actually should take about 10,000 units a day to build up your vitamin D in the body. But if you take it for many years, you could slip into hypervitaminosis D, especially if you're older, like this guy was 73 years of age. However, another 2020 case report 56-year-old woman who took an average of 130,000 units of D per day for 20 months because she was trying to treat her multiple sclerosis symptoms. She was hospitalized for symptoms of vitamin D hypervitaminosis that included nausea, vomiting, and muscle weakness. Her vitamin D blood level were 265 nanograms per milliliter. Remember, 150 nanograms is considered highly toxic. Hus was 265. <laughs> the safe upper limit of D, what, what they say, the safe upper limit is 4,000 units a day. In other words, you can take that and for years and not ever experience hypervitaminosis D. Uh, so what else? Elevated blood calcium levels. As I said earlier, 
if you take vitamin, one of the functions of vitamin D is to increase the absorption of, of, of calcium. If you take too much vitamin D, you tend to have too much calcium absorption. So you get a elevated calcium levels in your blood. Uh, that, that's called hypocalcemia. And symptoms of how, how do you know you have hypercalcemia? Digestive distress, vomiting, nausea, constipation, stomach pain, fatigue, dizziness, hallucinations, confusion, uh, loss of appetite, excessive urination, kidney stones, kidney injury, and even kidney failure, high blood pressure, heart rhythm disturbances, dehydration. The normal range of blood calcium in blood tests is 8.5 to 10.8 milligrams per deciliter. If it's above 10.8, you're looking at possible hypercalcemia, which could be caused by excessive amounts of vitamin D. And it usually happens when you've taken huge doses of D for an excessively long time. A, a 2015 case study reported that an older man who had dementia, who was taking 50,000 units of D for six months, he was hospitalized with symptoms related to high elevated calcium levels. Another uh, 2020 case report uh, the woman who took 1, uh, 130,000 units of D per day, she was also hospitalized for symptoms related to hypercalcemia. So uh, her, her blood calcium levels, just so you know, were 12.9 milligrams of des deciliter. As I said, anything above 10.8 is usually symptomatic for uh, elevated calcium. Uh, too much uh, uh, vi vitamin D can also cause various gastrointestinal symptoms related again to too much calcium in the blood. That again, uh, these gastrointestinal symptoms, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, poor, happy, uh, poor appetite. Uh, not all people with hypercalcemia experience these symptoms. One woman experienced nausea and weight loss after taking a supplement that was later found to contain 78 more, more vitamin D, 78 times more vitamin D than stated on the level. In other words, it was a mislabeled supplement. Wow. These symptoms occurred in response to extremely high doses of D. Another case, a young boy just developed stomach pain and constipation after taking improperly labeled vitamin D supplements. Well, his brother experienced elevated blood levels without any other symptoms. So again, it varies. So uh, another, another possible sign of too much D, altered mental status. Uh, you, you know, people with vitamin D toxicity induce hypercalcemia can have symptoms like confusion, depression, and psychosis. In some cases, they could slip into a coma. A, 2000, in a 2021 case report, a 64-year-old man, 64-year-old man accidentally took 200,000 units of D per day because he misunderstood the medication instructions. He showed altered mental status and other serious, serious symptoms related to elevated calcium. He, he remained agitated and confused for, for the first 10 days, but his symptoms gradually improved as his calcium levels dropped. Took about 18 days for his calcium levels to return to normal. Too much vitamin D can also cause kidney problems, including kidney injury and even kidney failure. Uh, because, again, because of the elevated levels of calcium, which can lead to water loss through too much urination and calcification of the kidneys. Hypercalcemia can also cause the blood vessels of the kidneys to constrict, which leads to decreased calcium uh, kidney function. The kidneys are highly dependent on adequate blood flow. And when the, when the blood vessels in the kidneys constrict, it causes the destruction of kidney filtering units. Many studies have reported moderate to severe kidney injury in people who develop vitamin D toxicity. Uh, vitamin D deficiency also can harm the kidneys and lead to severe complications. So, uh, let's see. Uh, about uh, I said, no, no, no. I think that's about it, really. So you know, again. Uh, the main problem with uh, with uh, excess D would be its effect on, on calcium. It greatly uh, too much vitamin D greatly increases the absorption of calcium. You get hypercalcemia, which uh, leads to de deposition and activity of calcium throughout the body, which is very dangerous. Uh, uh, it can lead to a number of diseases and symptoms. So, again, uh, I, I strongly think that most people should be on a vitamin D supplement. My recommendation is to take about 2,000 units a day, uh, unless you're deficient in cal and, uh, vitamin D, in which case you'd start out with maybe 10,000 units a day. Have your 25-hydroxy-D blood test done. If you're uh, if after taking the 10,000 units a day for a couple of weeks, if your vitamin D level blood level now is above 30 or ideally between 60 and 65, 
you know, you can cut the uh, vitamin D down to uh, uh, maybe uh, between 2,500 and 5,000. But again, for most people, 2,000 units a day uh, is a good amount of D. And if you take it, they're very tiny capsules. They're very easy to take. Make sure you take vitamin D3. That's the natural one, not D2, D3. And also, you want to uh, make sure you take your vitamin D with fat, a little bit of fat in a meal. You need a lot, tablespoon of olive oil or something like that. Fish oil would do it because vitamin D is a fat, fat soluble vitamin. It does require fat for absorption. So that's about it for uh, vitamin D toxicity. If you want to have more information on nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy. Did I say hormonal therapy? You know, like testosterone, that type of stuff. Uh, I don't talk about steroid regimes because there's really no science behind that. Uh, although I do report on all the latest information, the medical information about anabolic steroids, it's all reported in applied metabolics. So even though I'm not giving out steroid regimes, uh, I do report on all the latest information on any type of performance enhancing drug. It's in, it's in applied metabolics. Uh, it's 30 to 50 pages every month. And there's no ads. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I have almost 60 years of experience, 45 years as a professional writer. I know how to write. Uh, I guarantee you, you will learn something in every issue of applied metabolics, no matter what your level of, uh, of, uh, experience or learning is because, uh, this, uh, it's again, state of the art stuff. When you, when you, uh, subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, science, and medicine. I also have an email portal on my, on my Applied Metabolics website. For current subscribers only, I don't accept unsolicited questions. You can ask me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything that comes to mind. As long as they're short questions. Uh, and uh, what else can I say? Oh, I, think, I think that about covers it. Uh, uh, just give it a shot. I guarantee you, 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 will, uh, you will learn from Applied Metabolics, and I cover, I don't cover the usual crap you see on the internet, these blogs, and, and on the, some of these websites, a lot of the stuff I cover you won't find on the internet, it's brand new, and a lot of it, you know, is is just, like I said, state-of-the-art stuff, uh, I also talk a lot about training, uh, I, I, I help you avoid the mistakes that I made over almost six decades of training, so you can avoid problems later on that some of which I have to admit I'm experiencing today because I didn't know these things when I was young. I did certain exercises that were not suitable that caused, uh, well, that caused arthritis. I have arthritis in both my shoulders and my knees because of certain exercises and I can help you to avoid those problems if you read my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter adopt a dog. They are the best. Take care.